Welcome to this webinar on life cycle management with, with Eloquent Records. My name is Maria Robinson and I'm an Archives and Records Consultant at Eloquent Systems. We provide a web suite of knowledge management applications which include library, archives, records, and museum applications. All four are web-based and they integrate closely to provide the fullest possible range of knowledge management functionality. If you're already using one of our other applications, it will be easy to add Eloquent Records to your platform. All the Eloquent applications are also highly customizable, and we look forward to working with you to produce a system that meets your needs. I'm going to take you through some of the basics of the record system and explain the features we offer that will help you manage your classification scheme and your records, both physical and electronic. I'll do a presentation followed by a live demo. Feel free to ask questions at any point. So a business classification scheme and records retention is central to the system. It controls all of your workflow activities from filing through to final disposition. In Eloquent Records, your classification scheme is tied directly to your retention and disposition schedules in order to help you manage the life cycle of your records most efficiently. The entry forms are designed with a hierarchical classification in mind. We have single entry forms for comprehensive data entry that include fields for synonyms, alternate terms, relationship links, and legal citations, as well as spreadsheet forms that are designed for more rapid skeleton data entry. We can also import your scheme from an already existing source to save you the trouble of entering it yourself. So with your classification scheme, the retention and disposition schedules drive your workflows. Once you assign a classification code to your records, Eloquent records will automatically calculate when they're up for disposition based on their retention periods. It's easy to flag your records with legal holds, and these will be excluded from your final disposition reports. The application is not going to let you destroy them by accident. Reports can be run on records that are up for review, disposition, or on hold, also for your classification scheme, and many other things. Eloquent records can be configured for inactive records only, and cover accessioning, allocating warehouse space, retrieval and tracking, legal holds, and timely disposition. Or you can start by opening physical and virtual folders for both physical and electronic active records. You'll find the same single entry web forms for comprehensive data entry and rapid entry batch forms for basic skeleton entry. These forms can accommodate both physical and electronic records. We also have add-ins for Microsoft Outlook, Word, and Excel. These allow you and your staff to add their emails, Word, and Excel documents, either one or many at a time, and include all of the metadata and the attachments. You can move these directly into Eloquent with a single click without leaving the Microsoft application. These can also be automatically converted to PDF, and they are full text searchable. We have a file explorer utility that will allow you to upload any record type from any of your shared or local drives directly into Eloquent. These include your SharePoint records and all of their associated metadata. If you've been scanning large numbers of documents, Eloquent can also capture the resulting record and its metadata and pull all of that in in one go. So here's a quick look at the Outlook and the Word add-ins. When you're in one of your documents or your emails, just go up to the top ribbon and select the appropriate form that you want to import these into. So the front end user search interface is easy to navigate. Users can search for records by keyword, classification, dates, department, record type, and more. The Google style keyword search is intuitive enough for everyone, while experienced users can use the advanced features for very precise results. Searches retrieve both electronic and physical records. The electronic records can be viewed online, and the physical records can be requested from the record center with an automatically generated email. Users have the ability to maintain private saved lists of records and classifications, and they can send search results to a variety of reports and output formats. Users can be restricted to certain groups of records too. So this can be based on classification, user department, or any other security parameters. The advanced architecture of the software also permit, permits several branches or institutions to share a system. This branch control module gives local autonomy over subsets of the records for some functions and global control over the entire system for centralized management functions. For example, everyone has read-only access to the classification scheme, 
but the records coordinator for each work group or branch can create and work with only their own folders. So Eloquent Records offers additional modules to manage accessions, track and manage storage locations, and track your retrievals. So included with the system comes the ability to assign barcodes and print labels for your folders and boxes. You can run transfer and destruction notices when it comes time to review records for final disposition, and you can flag your records with their final disposition status. So for example, when you destroy your electronic records, the record does get permanently deleted, but the metadata will remain as evidence and it includes the destruction dates and the authorization details. Everything else in the system will just simply be marked as destroyed. Beyond the standard records management functionality, Eloquent Records offers you a few more things. One of these is Civic View. This is a second interface for the general public to view your public records. So this is designed for local government to provide a space to share board and committee meeting minutes and agendas, bylaws and other information, and even videos of their public hearings. Of course, it can always be customized for whatever use you have in mind. So what it does really is just create a subs or take a subset of your records and you can display them here and make them accessible to a read-only audience. Included with the Eloquent Records is the Google Analytics module. This module tracks usage statistics, such as number of site visits, keywords used, and records viewed. You can use these stats to monitor system usage, form strategies, and make adjustments as necessary. Eloquent Systems offers a free 30-day trial period for all of our knowledge management applications. You can evaluate the system for its suitability for your organization. We will provide free, live, one-on-one -on -one training using your own records and work with you to develop a strategy for importing your legacy data. It's time now to see how the Eloquent system works live with a demo. So we're going to start with the classification module since this is what drives the rest of the system. Let me log in here. I also want to note that I am using our demo system today, so the system might not be set up the way that you run your program. We can rework any of these forms to include the fields and the processes that you use. So we're going to go under maintenance and then classification scheme and then search classification. We're going to take a look at the public side of your classification view first. So this is where your staff would be coming uh, to search for classification terms. So the classification we have loaded in here are just samples from the Local Government Management Association in British Columbia. And when I say just samples, I mean we don't have all of the codes in here, so it might look a little sparse. So let's click on top level up here at the top, and what this does is it gives you the whole hierarchy. So anywhere you see a plus button, it means that these can break down into lower levels. So the LGMA uses a block classification scheme. So what this means is each of these main top levels composed of a, are composed of a, a block of numbers, and then each primary falls underneath one of those with its own number and each primary then breaks down into a number of secondaries. The classification should generally be in a hierarchical structure, moving from the general to the specific, because records classification should, anyway, be functionally based, and is designed to cover all of the functions and the activities carried out by an organization in the course of business. So records classification schemes usually use numeric or alphanumeric codes, though some places do use to sources these codes are central to the organization of the system. So let's take a look at some of these. So when you click on any one of these, you get a description over on the right hand side. This one's a bit sparse, but you get the sort of the top level hierarchy here. You get the title and its classification number, and then you have its retention information and its disposition method. And if it does break down any further, you will see that too. Some of these have classification codes as well, or sorry, legal citations. 
And when we go down under protective services, let's try emergency measures and business recovery plans. Here we go. And we have a lengthy legal citation here from the Emergency Program Act. So you can copy and paste all the information in here. The other thing you can do is just paste in a URL that will lead directly to um, this piece of legislation itself. It might be easier for maintenance, but that's up to you. So your business classification scheme is something that you should really map out ahead of time, um, as I said already, and make changes to sparingly. And it should be based on a thorough analysis of your organization's functions, activities, and your existing records. Now aside from using this uh, top-down or hierarchical search, you can also use a keyword search at the top um, and search directly for whichever classifications you might be interested in. You know, maybe I have some records in front of me that are, have something to do with legislation and I'm trying to find my classification code. I can just type in le legislation and see what my results are. And I can use these hierarchy arrows to find out where these things fit uh, in the scheme of things. The other thing I can do on here, which is really helpful for some staff, is a number of staff are usually only responsible for a couple of codes here and there. They don't really need to know the whole structure. So when they find one that's useful to them, they can check it off over here on the checkbox and then go up to their list. It gets saved sort of like a shopping cart. And so then you can view your list and choose either detail display or hierarchy display, which is actually kind of nice. If you were to choose a very top level one, then if you choose the hierarchy display, it's going to give you everything underneath that. And it's also going to give you all of the retention and disposition information related to every one of these codes. So this can be really handy. Um, somebody can either save this one, maybe they can print it out. Um, the application will also save their, their lists, so they can always just come back to that page and get a quick view of any of the codes that are of interest to them. So let's head back to the administrator menu and I'm going to show you how easy it is to enter your classification scheme once you have it all worked out. So if your scheme is already created and it's living in another system or in a spreadsheet, then we, let us import it for you and we'll save you the time. But if not, you can definitely do it yourself and it will go pretty quickly. So you have two entry options. You can use the single entry forms. The single entry forms include the full range of fields um, or you can use the batch forms, and these only include a couple of details here and there. So let's start on the full form first, the single entry, so you can see what all of your options are. And we're going to search for an existing classification. And see how this form gets filled out. So what we have here is the name of this particular classification. And then we have the higher level, um, or the parent classification that this one is linked to. The sequence code down here gets appended to the parent's classification code. So uh, anytime you go searching for this particular code, you're going to get the whole 0125-20. So there's other things on here too. You can add a description of what this code is for. You know, this code should be used for records or includes records related to these particular activities. You have some synonyms, some cross-references, if there are other classification codes that are related to this one that people might be interested in. You have your retention and disposition, where you can choose, you know, will this be like current year plus two years, or sorry, 24 months, um, and then destroy, or should it be for retention by archives? Is it permanent, meaning will it stay in your department pretty much forever, maybe because it's about a building that's not going to be torn down for another couple hundred years, um, or you know, select a retention. You can modify these lists uh, for your particular disposition methods, and maybe the way you like to word things. And then any notes here about what those mean. Like if you're saying superseded, maybe you'd like to note to say what exactly superseded means in this particular case. Then you can include your legal citations. Uh, the office of record, if this particular classification is related to a particular department, confidential, vital, restrictions, and so on. Let's click the back button. 
and go back and see the batch form. If you're not interested in entering all of those details right away and you'd rather get the bare bones data in right away, that's what these batch forms are for. So what you're going to do here is in the higher level, that's where you're going to find that parent classification. And then every row below that, down here in the spreadsheet area, represents a single child classification code that's going to get linked to the parent. So you include the name, the sequence code, so just meaning those, the next couple of numbers that are going to get appended. And then if you have fields for description and the basic retention and disposition information. So we have some tricks that I want to show you on these forms just so you can see how really easy it is to fill these things out. Uh, for example, on the sequence code, I can type in 01. Maybe I have five of them. If I type in equals plus one, I'm going to be able to increment all the way up. Fortunately, it doesn't keep track of the, or carry over the leading zero, but it's not that hard to add that back in. What you can also do is if you want to, say, increment these in tens, if you're using a block numeric, or maybe you want to increment by 50 or 100, you can just say equals plus whatever amount you want to increment by, and it will automatically fill those in for you. It's the same thing with your titles over here. If you just type in equals and return, it will copy all that information down. So if you have a bunch of names or classification terms that are quite similar to each other, they all start with the same thing, um, then you can just do this and then fill in you know, whatever further details are necessary. This trick is a little bit more helpful when it comes to adding in folder titles rather than for classification, but I still wanted to show you that now. The other thing you can do with this form is use the Excel import button. I'll, show, I'll demonstrate this one a little bit later when we get to file inventories and box lists. But if you have all of your classifications sitting in an Excel spreadsheet, this is really easy. You just click this button and it'll basically load in everything from the, from the Excel spreadsheet directly into this eloquent spreadsheet. And you didn't have to do a single data entry. It's great. So I think that covers classification. So I'm going to log out and now I'm going to log back in as a regular staff member. And once your classifications have been entered, the backbone of your system is in place. So now you can start looking at adding records, files, and boxes, and move through the accessioning process through to final disposition. So these different points in the life cycle are addressed by different sets of menus in the staff login here. Well, we're going to start with daily activity, and then we'll move through the rest of it. This daily activity is going to handle things like checkouts and check-ins, as well as the link to searching. So again, let's check out the public view first, or you know, the regular old staff view. So if you have employees or staff who are going to be searching for records or boxes that are already in the system, you know, find out where they are, what the classification is, um, things like that, this is where they're going to go. And you can always put a link directly to this page, uh, maybe on an intranet page somewhere, uh, somewhere where your staff are going to be able to find it. So this screen is built very similarly to the classification search screen that we just looked at, where you have all of your search boxes and key prompts up at the top, and your results and the details are going to show in the panels below. So I can search by keyword and date, or I can look up particular classifications or particular departments. I also have a precision search available over here, which gives me a couple of other options to search by, and I can build a nice query over here. I'm just going to search for anything with classification that has to do with minutes. I could also click on the search button and find that particular classification number if I wanted. And I can always use my hierarchy arrows to you know, uh, expand and collapse these two and work my way through my classification options. Oops, let's go back. So here are some results. Um, <clears throat> what I see over here on the browse is I get the record type followed by the record title followed by classification and smaller uh, numbers below. On the details side, I get a lot more information like the barcode, is class, full classification information, the higher level, the office of record, location, if it's part of an accession, and all, all of pretty much anything you might possibly want. Anything here that's highlighted in blue is linked, 
Now if I want more information regarding any of those, I can just click and get that right away. I also have these hierarchy arrows over here on the left for my results. So I can see when I go up a level, that is part of the box. And I can actually then expand that box and see everything that is inside the box. And here's the box detail. It gives you slightly different because this one is a container, so it consists of a number of things. And you can click on any one of these as well and get more information in another window. Let me show you an electronic records example. So all of these are just paper. So here's an electronic document. And you know it's electronic because it has digital content. So if I click on just the text, the text, this is an email, by the way. Um, I'm going to get just a text version of the email itself, the material type emails. And then the attachments are also here as well. And I can click on either of these and be asked if I want to download, you know, open or save them. I also have the option to request this item. This is an electronic one, so it doesn't make as much sense, but if this were a folder or a box, then I can click on Request for Item, and it would open up a new email uh, that would go directly to the Records Manager. Um, and I can type in a note in there saying, I, I need these boxes, or I need these records for such and such reason. So I also have the Saved List functionality in here, too. So I can check off some in documents that are of interest to me. And I can view that list. And I can actually request multiple materials at once in a single email using this Go process up here, too. And lastly, there's a link up here in the corner. If I need to go directly to the classification search, I can do that, too. So let's move back to our menu. We've covered daily activity. So let's start moving through the life cycle. First one is active records. So this is where you're going to manage records that are still in the active phase of their life cycle. You can create folders here, file documents, maintain your active storage locations, and produce reports. So most of these forms also use the eloquent spreadsheet approach, uh, where you have the common parent data at the top and a number of rows to accommodate each file, document, or what have you. So we'll start with folders. So in the folder form, uh, you can input the, the common shared data, like start and end dates. And of course, you don't have to fill out any of these. These are all optional, uh, depending on what um, the, you know, the details of the folders that you are trying to enter. They might not share their dates, but they might share the classification, and they might share a department. So your folders can correspond to physical file folders on the shelf, or they can just be virtual ones that are designed to hold electronic records. But of course, you can also mix physical and electronic documents and use the same folder to hold both kinds of documents. If they're related to the same activity and they have the same classification and the same date range, there's really no reason why you need to create two separate folders to track two different types of documents. It's just a different format. So file documents. On the document form, what you're going to do here is select the parent folder, and then each of these rows below, you're going to list documents. Uh, so you have the option to, if you're dealing with electronic documents, you can actually attach either a scanned or a born digital um, electronic document here. If it's just a paper document and you're deciding to track your active physical documents at this level, then all you need to do is really enter a name and a date, and that will do just fine. And produce reports and other output. So once you've created your folders, you can print out barcode labels for the physical ones that are going to go on the shelf. So you can do this, or to do this, you can search by classification, office, or even system creation date. And that one might even be the handiest if you're trying to pull up folders that you've just created. So I'm going to go for classification. And I'm going to search for in-camera meetings. I know I have a classification for that somewhere. Let's take that and do a search. So these are all of my folders in this classification code. 
So I can tick off the ones I'm interested in. And over here on my Go menu, then I can select one of my label types. When I press Go, it's going to format all of these labels for me according to that sp uh, specific label size. Again, we can customize these for you if you're using a different label size or want to see different information on here, we can do that. And then all you need to do is send this to the printer that's already loaded with, um, with those labels. Okay, so I think you're ready now to ship off your records to the record center. It had to happen sometime. So we're going to move on down to the inactive records administration area. This is where you're going to add your files to your boxes and add your boxes to accessions and then produce transfer and destruction notices. So let's go to link folders to boxes. You have two options on this page. If you're using Eloquent Records to manage your active records, you've probably already created a number of folders. And what you're going to need to do here is do a search to pull up those existing folders that are ready to get shipped off. But if you're not managing your active records, then you need to create your folders here for the first time. Again, you can just type in all of your folder names here. Or, now I'm going to demonstrate this use of the Excel import button, because I already have a box inventory. So I don't want to retype these all over again. This is really quite straightforward. All I need to do is map my Excel document to the Eloquent spreadsheet columns. Once that's done, I click Go, and boom, they're in the form. So at this point, I need to do things like add in a department, because all of these folders share the same department. I need to give them a classification. I'm going to find that one. If I had some keywords, I could type those in first, but I'm just going to go hunting for it. So these are about computer systems. I can keep going on down here. It's about applications and applications by name. And you'll notice that these are only clickable if they're the bottom of these classification codes. Um, we don't let people choose, or if we don't want to anyway, we don't let people choose the uppermost level. And box. I already have a box made, so I'm just going to find it and select it. But if I didn't, I can create a box now on the fly using the Create button. This form is pretty straightforward. I can have a location. My box gets a name. Maybe my box is part of an accession. Physical size. And a few other things. So all your folders, all of these folders that I've named down here, are going to get saved with these values assigned to them when I press save. You can leave any of these blank, of course. They're not mandatory. It's only whichever ones are relevant at the moment. So now we're going to link our boxes to an accession record. And of course, you can also do this the other way around. If you want to create your accession record first and then create your boxes and then put your folders in the box, it's entirely up to you. So this is where we're going to add our boxes into an accession, though. So again, you have the option of searching for boxes that you've already created, or you can create them anew in the spreadsheet area down here. So each of your boxes will get created with a code and a location. You can also use the Excel import button again. Maybe I have a list of boxes already in a spreadsheet somewhere. So the other important thing on here, then, is to create your accession record. If you already have your accession record created, you can click Find and pull it up, or you can click the Create button and make a new one on the fly. This will include information like title, dates, description, the accession date, method of acquisition, anything else you find necessary on here. So remember that the software is customizable. Um, to track the information that you need to track. We can add or remove any of these fields as requested. So for example, you might not uh, necessarily put start, uh, classification at the accession level. You might just do, you might track classification further down, in which case we can get rid of this field for you. So let's go back to producing reports for your inactive records. 
And this is where you can produce transfer and destruction notices. This time I'm just going to do a keyword search to call up my records that are ready to be transferred. Say it's just these first three. Over on my Go menu here, you see I have more options now. I can transfer notification with the box contents or without the box contents, or I can do a destruction notification with the box contents or without the box contents. And these are just the default templates you've set up right now, but these can also be customized to include your company letterhead um, and things like that. So the last part of the life cycle process is final disposition. After you've gotten your notices signed off, you can officially destroy your records or you can transfer them to the archives. And that doesn't leave much to do in the system at this point except to make sure that those records are now marked that way. And you can use this update disposition status menu item to do that. And I said earlier that if you're destroying electronic records, what's going to happen is the actual electronic record will be permanently deleted, but the descriptive information or the metadata will be, will be retained. In all other cases, for all of your physical records, the, the descriptive record and all the metadata will re remain as well, but it's now going to be flagged with this its disposition information saying it has been destroyed or it has been sent to the archives and it happened on such and such date and was authorized by uh, such and such person. And this is also the area um, where you can place and release your legal holds. So if you place any legal holds on your records here, um, when you do try to pull up records for a final disposition, they're not going to show up. The system is not going to let you uh, try to destroy records that have a hold on them. So you realize how important that is. Let's go back for a final review now. So we started talking about classification. Because classification really is the heart of your records management program and it's tied very closely with the retention and disposition schedules in Eloquent Records to help you manage the life cycle of your records. Our data entry forms for classification are designed to accommodate a hierarchy. We have those single entry web forms that allow you all the comprehensive fields and we also have the spreadsheet forms for rapid entry and we can import uh, your existing classification scheme for you. The retention and the disposition does drive your workflow. We, Eloquent Records will automatically calculate those dates for you. We can do legal holds, and we're not going to let you destroy anything accidentally if it has a legal hold on it, and we can do all sorts of reporting. When it comes to managing your actual records, we also have easy entry forms for these two. You can track your physical and electronic records through here. And we can also very easily pull in any of your records and the associated metadata directly from Outlook, Office, SharePoint, or any of your local Assured drives. The search interface features a simple Google-style keyword search, but there's always a more advanced option, too, that will allow you to build a very precise query. You have electronic records in the system. You can view those immediately online. Or if you're looking at the physical records, there's an easy way to... Uh, ask for those via email. And of course you can see all of the descriptive metadata for any one of these records on the detailed display. You can also select and, uh, or sorry, select records of classifications and maintain lists of these, which you can either, either view or make reports out of, or even send in a mass email to the records manager as in the form of a request. We do have the ability to implement security restrictions. So if there are certain classifications or certain types of records or groups of records that need to be, that are private and not everybody in the system should be able to see, we can make those restrictions happen so people only see what they're allowed to and nothing more. We also have that branch control module that works really well for if you have different departments that are maybe somewhat autonomous and each has a records coordinator of their own that have their own responsibilities and they shouldn't be messing around in each other's departments. So you can sort of branch things off so they have control within their own area but not in the others. We do accessioning um, and everything that follows from that. So we'll do the box storage location and retrieval tracking. You can print out barcodes for your folders and your boxes. 
it's very easy to create these transfer and destruction notices, as we saw, and the final disposition is handled quite easily as well. It's just a simple flagging saying that this was deleted, or sorry, this was destroyed, or this was sent to archives. And we have a few other things too, like that Civic View module. So this provides a second access point for your public records. I know I didn't demonstrate it for you. But what it does is create a second access point that's just read-only, and this is meant really for the general, general public, not just public as in you know, your, your staff members. This is where you can put documents that relate to you know, committee meetings and council meetings, public hearings and the like. And members of uh, you know, the general public can come here and view these, and it, it helps uh, encourage government uh, accountability and transparency. And the Google Analytics module comes with this package for Eloquent Records. For some of our other systems, this is a separate module, but for Eloquent Records it is included, which is great. And this tracks the system usage that you can then use all of those results uh, for various analyses. You see who, who's been looking at what records, or how many times those records have been looked at, how have they been used, what keywords are people using, um, and what search parameters are they using. You know, are they taking advantage of the classification or not, that kind of thing. So you can try it for free. I think that might be the best part. We offer a free 30-day trial. Um, to anyone who wants to come in and try our system. We'll set up a free pilot project for you. We can enter your own data and we'll train you on it live, one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great deal. So you can see you know, if this system is really going to work for, you, for your organization or not. And we're happy to help you customize this in any way, uh, shape, or form to make Eloquent Records work for your records management program. If you have any questions at all, please give us a call. We'd be happy to set up a further one-on-one -on -one demo with you if you want to see the system in more detail and ask more questions for us, or ask more questions of us. Um, or if you'd like to set up a pilot project, we'd be happy to talk to you about that too. We look forward to hearing from you. I hope you enjoyed this webinar.